Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Chris Martinez. I am the host of Operation Agency Freedom. And in my day job, I am the CEO and founder of Bloom, where we work with marketing agencies and provide management consulting and technology to increase profit, maximize your agency's value, unlock your potential, and achieve an eight-figure exit. Today, I am joined by Tamara Thompson, who is the founder of Broadcast Your Authority TV. She has a diverse background in entrepreneurship. She is an award-winning director and video marketer. She owns many, many companies, very, very successful, has built an amazing agency. And today, we're going to be talking about her journey as a business leader. It is absolutely amazing what she's been able to build. So welcome to the show, Tamara. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me. I'm excited to be here and grateful. Thank you. Right on. Okay. So what I want to talk about right out the gate is you are an investor in a number of other companies. And I want to bring that up because a lot of agency owners, they don't want their marketing agency to be the only business that they run, right? And so they kind of want to use the marketing agency as a springboard to get into some other businesses. And even I myself am I'm looking at taking equity in a few companies right now. I, I think we would both agree that, you know, marketing is an amazing skill. So if you can drive new leads and new business and traffic and, and help that business grow from a revenue standpoint, it's incredibly valuable. You know, like, is this something that you always wanted to do or you wanted to be kind of like a serial entrepreneur? That's a loaded question. You know, it's funny because I never really thought that I was going to be an entrepreneur. I actually started my journey in the fitness industry in my oh, wow. 20s. And I actually went back to school in my late 20s and graduated mm -hmm. from the Seattle Art Institute for Filmmaking when okay. I was 30, 32 years old. So it was a later venture where my mom was actually an entrepreneur. And okay. so it was in my background and I started watching Shark Tank when it first mm -hmm. started coming out, started watching different things on YouTube, on entrepreneurship, started attending events over like 15 years ago or so. And I really didn't know that I was going to be a serial entrepreneur at that point. So at the time I was way back in the day, I was a freelancer mm -hmm. and started building my own production company back when I lived in Seattle, Washington. I ended up directing a bunch of films that ended up taking off from viral content. So long story short, what we do now, we'll jump into that when in our agency yeah. model, but what we do now was reflected by what happened in the past, how mm -hmm. we created micro content, which were back then not known as shorts or TikTok or reels mm -hmm. yet. But of course we all know them as teaser videos. Mm -hmm. So we created these epic teaser videos that we launched on YouTube to drive traffic back to the full length version or episode or video, which at the time were documentary films. Oh, so sure. My films ended up being getting taken taking off on YouTube first, like teasers, leading back to other opportunities where I started getting asked to speak. My films started going on different circuits. One of our teasers ended up going viral and had like 888,000 views back in like 2010. Wow. And we were like, what? And so we're like, what is this YouTube beast? And so that allowed me to open up more train of thought of how we could do this for other people. And it turned into be doing that stuff for business owners. So mm -hmm. we had a production company where we had one-off projects, but we later evolved into a content marketing agency with the focus of podcasting because it had a consistency factor, right? Weekly shows versus mm -hmm. just like a one-off documentary. The film started taking off and I started getting known in the Seattle area quite well. So I had a, a mentor named Kenny Smith that introduced me to Lynn Shelton, who was my uh, mentor before she passed. She was a big female director in Seattle for a while. She worked with people like Emily Blunt on mm -hmm. like just different big films, like Kira Knightley and some other people on a lot of her films. And it was, it was a shift though, later on that I was like, how can I go from filmmaking industry into business? Because I started speaking at events and getting inspired and then being targeted by ads. And then we were hired to do production for Thrive for Cole Hatter years ago mm -hmm. when he first started it. And so then we evolved, but it was those types of like conferences that inspired me years back and then started joining masterminds over the years. And, but it really was just a different point where this whole evolution just turned from filmmaking director into company owner, into, you know, building a team managed company later on. And then when COVID hit, gratefully, we took off really well. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people had a lot of hardship, of course, during COVID, but a lot of people turned to podcasting during that time. 
And that was about the time that I actually started to help invest in other companies as well. I saw opportunities for companies that I knew we could help the market in different ways, but I saw like a bigger vision in the CEOs. So I invested in over 25 companies, literally with from 2018 to now, but it was all because I believed in the founder. I believed in the product or service or offer. And then they also had some sort of understanding of business where I knew it could grow. I knew we could grow at that point. Mm -hmm. So it, it never really, it never really came to me that I would have this journey, but I was super grateful that like whenever I still see things, my friends will text me and say, Hey, there's this offer coming in. Like, do you want to jump in on this opportunity? So then I learned about more about the founder on that side and then set goals and set expectations on things like that. But it's, it's interesting. I also do dabble in real estate investment and, as well, but it's, it started opening that, but it was when we started scaling the podcasting agency that mm -hmm. I actually started my Thompson and Thompson investment firm so that we could also start other types of opportunities for business. So you, you, if people are spinning their wheels and they're so focused on one once you start getting a company to scale, mm. why not diversify it into other areas? Not all of right. them, of course, are successful and people just have to understand that. But some of it comes back in time and it just, you know, pays out a lot of dividends over time, but it builds your, your, your wealth over time, but you're, yeah. you get back to your family, other things like an example, like this year for Christmas, we're flying out a dozen family members to Orlando We're we're treating everyone to a Disney world trip. Wow. And we're staying in like a, 10, 10 room mansion in the reunion resort and having everything covered for everyone because they are not entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. They, they're family members that have seen success grow over time because I, I started from scratch. I started from nothing. And so I'm one of those success stories that have built with the grind and the, the grit, but learned yeah. how to delegate on that part to like, be like, Hey, what do I have to do to get out of this? What do I have to focus on that? I'm really good at that other yeah. people better. So like, those are the things that got me Joan's step over the years. I'm like, I can do this because I can give back to my family. I can do this now. I can give back to other people. I can buy our, you know, our team members computers, you know, like mm -hmm. different things that people are looking for. So, but I really never thought that I would be on this route, honestly. So That's a great story. And congratulations. I love the way that like everything ends up leading to the next one. You know, it's like, and when you're going through it, you don't really recognize that that is, I don't know if I'm being overly dramatic, but that's altering the course of your life. Yeah. You know, like that one connection, that one conference. Sure. Yeah. It, it, Literally, there was moments in, in life when building the agency model in the beginning, it was like this one decision allowed this door to open to mm -hmm. a lot here. Like it was like, even when I, years back when I w was buying my first home, mm -hmm. you know, like this certain scenario happened in order to help this happen, you know? Right. So it's, it, yeah, I look back at everything. It's, it's always like calculated risks. Sometimes you take risks that aren't necessarily calculated, but over the years I've learned, I'm like, I know now what I'm looking for in every single opportunity, every single deal, any, yep. anything that makes sense. I, one, I have to trust my gut because our gut doesn't lie, but also like looking at the numbers of different things. So just makes sense on that that realm of it because yeah I used to be that risk taker I was like let's just do it you know yeah. in my to like early 30s I'm like hey we're just gonna go and we're just we're gonna, gonna figure it out and it's gonna, gonna work figure yeah. it out manifest it <laughs> yes you know I was like power of manifestation and you know I mean I think you can manifest you can believe you can dream you can do you can put the positive energy out there and put the intentions out there. You can do your vision boards. You can do whatever it is that somebody believes in, if you believe in, in that aspect or not. But it really is like the calculated risks at this yeah. point. Because I've like made some large investments where in when I when my gut like wasn't fully in, I knew it wasn't right. And then I was yeah. like, why didn't I listen to my gut? You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. This is not, it's not an easy journey by any means. Right. Um, but once you get going with things like that, and if you're looking, if you still in one company and you're looking to do other things just have the right people around you that you can help like lean back on other investor friends or colleagues like hey take a look at this does this seem right to you or you know have somebody the mentors are, are so important you know any of these ventures basically yeah. all right well let's shift and let's start talking about broadcast your authority because i don't want to say that's the one that put you on the map because you had a lot of successes prior to that but 
right now you're, you've got around 40-ish team members. They're basically running the business for you. Let's just kind of walk through what it is that you do with Broadcast Your Authority. So the team at this point, so we work with hundreds of clients weekly mm -hmm. on their weekly show, their weekly mm -hmm. podcast, right? So this is really for any company or founder or CEO that has success, but they're they're the, the busy ones, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're like too busy to do anything. So it's a basically one-stop shop done for you service all around content marketing and podcasting. So allowing us to either come in and one, help you launch, launch your show from the concept to the name, to the everything that's involved in launching a show show, mm -hmm. uh, setting up the channels and everything like that, the design elements, you, you name it, any, all the tech aspects that you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. on that side. So we work with people that are looking to launch a show. We work with people that have a show and they're just looking to market it more effectively. Maybe they had a show, but maybe they haven't seen much success with it. Maybe they haven't added it to YouTube. Maybe they haven't optimized it. Maybe they haven't had an actual strategy to like generate sales and leads from their show. We come in and help that aspect and take, take that on. We've had several clients of that, that nature that have come over. They like, they started their show, they had it going, it was consistent and they moved over and they've been with us ever since. Yeah. Another, another part of broadcast your authority is our booking agency side. It's basically we're they're the team's doing all the, the, podcast, we call it the podcast tour, right? So your virtual podcast tour, you know, if mm -hmm. someone's looking to be booked on, let's say your show, Chris, or something, yeah. they might reach out and be like, Hey, you know, we have this guest. We think we do the market research. We make sure it makes sense. We want to make sure that we place people together with the right shows based on what the show's about. Cause you guys are the hosts of the show, right? It's mm -hmm. your show. We want to make sure that the right people fit there, that you guys have traction and consistency, but our, our clients also have value to share as well. So yeah. our clients are all reputable founders, experts, CEOs, companies on that side too. So we play that matchmaking service for that aspect too. So yeah, that's behind great. the scenes, yeah, behind the scenes of that broadcast, your authority itself is an overall encompassing brand, but mm -hmm. there's things underneath it from the podcasting side to the PR side to our own podcast called mm -hmm. Broadcast Your Authority. So my show is also called Bro Broadcast Your Authority. So when people are typing in Broadcast Your Authority, it comes up all over the place, different aspects, right? But it all has to do with podcasting on that, that realm. I love that. Obviously, if you're listening to the show, you're listening to a podcast, so you know what podcasts are. You know, like I started my <laughs> What's pod a podcast? You know, what, what exactly is a podcast? What's the internet? What's YouTube? I started my podcast because I wanted to make friends with a lot of these digital marketing influencers. So, you know, like when I started Dude, which was our outsourcing company, I was looking for potential partners, like affiliates. And I was like, well, how can I get in contact with these folks? Podcasts. Like everybody wants to go on a podcast and tell their story. And so I started my podcast. We had an in-house team that was producing all the episodes at the time. And I would have every big name in digital marketing come on my show. And then we started a relationship. And some of those turned into affiliate partners or just, you know, we were friends and they would refer me business and everything. Mm -hmm. And that was great. And then at one point, and this is right before COVID, it started. My team, people who are helping with the po with the podcast, I think they all quit at the same time. <laughs> and I didn't have anybody to produce it. And then I hired another company to to produce and edit my show, right? And then now I have an in-house team again that's producing my show, but it's such a great way to build your brand, right? This is why like I love your your company I'm name, Broadcast Your Authority. <laughs> and so now my show is like a mix of solo episodes. So I think yesterday we, re we released a solo episode talking about our big rebrand that we did. And then I do interviews as well. So it's such a great thing. Like I tell everybody, like start a podcast. I know there's some criticism that there's too many of them out there, but for your own, building your own authority, like it is amazing. 100%. I think that a lot of people, when you hire like an agency like ours, like yes. we're like that one-stop shop piece, yep. right? You have an in-house team, you know, so you've got the team members that you're delegating out and yeah. Oh, and I've done, you know, like over 150 episodes. So like we've already got and SOK. I'll show up for the interview. I, I right? literally, <laughs> like I, I hit record and it goes to my team. Exactly. I have a team. Like if you don't want to build out a team, which most people don't, you know, like use a service like yours. It's so easy. Well, it makes sense. So people, a lot of times people say like, you know, probably number one excuse, oh, I don't have the time. But if you have the means to, you know, set aside less than two hours a month 
and do batch yeah. reporting, right? So yeah. I don't know how you work, but with us, like we'll we'll suggest like, hey, you know, Chris, like it'd be good to batch record episode. You might even do this already where you're like, I had set up my interviews back to back in the same day. So then you're getting all that content for the month, even if you did your solo yeah. episodes the same day. And so it, people are like, oh yeah, I'm like if you just have to show up for your, your show like once a month and you've got right. the entire content for the whole month, I'm like, that helps that time essence, that time suck that they think sure. they're too busy for this. But I mean, if you're just helping get your, your authority out there, your mission, your messaging out there, like well, our team like even provides the topics that people yes. talk about because we're like, hey, this is what people are actually searching for on YouTube and Google, this is, you know, this is a, the search volume. This is the competition rate. You know, let's, let's be strategic always with your yeah. content because that's how their YouTube channels take off first. Right. Then of course it's being repurposed in the audio podcast. So it's, it's always about the strategy part. So we're considered mm -hmm. a data drip data-driven content marketing system for podcasts. So there's always a focus, but if all they have to do is show up and collaborate on some of the topic ideas and everything else is done, it's so much easier for people to be like, oh, I think I can actually start a podcast, you know? <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah, and that strategy piece is so unbelievably important. So like, even if you can record, this is, I think we're, you know, we're probably, well, I, I'm pretty sure we're weaker than you in the strategy. You know, like we can produce and it looks nice and it sounds great. But the strategy piece, I think, you know, you probably kick my butt there. So what's the name of this episode going to be, Chris? Let's do. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Just... Kicking Chris's butt, right? <laughs> so many, so many searches for some reason. How do I kick Chris Martinez's ass? Tamara, <laughs> Tamara Thompson with the inside scoop. So what I want to talk about for the remainder of the show is scaling your agency because you did it without spending any ads, which I'm personally not a huge fan of. And it was mainly through relationships and JV partnerships. And I want to talk about this because, you know, I've been in this business a long time and doing it in internet marketing, digital marketing for what? 12 years. I've never had good long-term relationships with JVs. I've always, maybe it's just me, the, the JV has done something shady. Like they've tried to like replicate what I'm doing or something like just the relationship kind of falls apart. And maybe that's because of the industry and there's a lot of scummy people in, in, in digital marketing, but so I always follow your gut. <laughs> yeah. I want to, I want to hear about you and how you've been able to get to multiple seven figures using these, using relationships, leveraging relationships, I, sh I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, there's definitely some scummy, scammy type people out there. And that's why I always tell people, you know, like always follow your gut in some scenarios because yeah. we've done partnerships in the beginning that same scenario where like, this didn't really turn out or you, you're yeah. launching something together, you're promoting something together and something doesn't feel right. So at this point in my life, my gut like tells me something mm -hmm. right away. And so the way that we really started leveraging it was one, we started, I started speaking at events, but before I even started speaking at events, I realized I wasn't quite getting into events. So we started okay. hosting our own events. And so we started hosting events, broadcast your authority events back in two that well, we started events. They weren't called broadcast your authority back then, but back in 2014, okay. we ended up starting launching events with the broadcast your authority name attached in 2017. But what happened was I wanted to make sure that we could position our team and company, but we also invited people out to speak, right? If I had to like hire them, like I, I ended up investing in, in a speaker that became one of my best friends and my bridesmaids. And then we do business oh, wow. deals together now, which is, is crazy. We're golf buddies now. I won't throw names out there, but you would know who this is. But it, it was interesting because I hired her for $50,000 to come speak at my event, event because something in my gut said I should hire her as my keynote. Like something was just like, I need, like my team was like, why are you wasting $50,000 on a keynote? Yeah, $50,000 right? is a lot of money. And well, on top of that, you're paying for everything. Paying for the event, <laughs> you know, like we have an event coming up in December. Like, yeah, that's yeah, a big it was, budget. Uh, but I was really good at it building relationships when I can get in front of a person and actually right. speak to a person and listen to a person as a person versus seeing them as an influencer or a celebrity or things like that. Mm -hmm. So years, years back before Twitter became X, Twitter was my vice that when it was pretty popular back then, mm -hmm. I would start reaching out to a lot of celebrities, influencers, things like that. Because at that point, a lot of people were still managing their, their, accounts. their own account. Yeah. And people still do some of them. But I would tweet them, but I would tweet them in ways that were like unique, providing value and giving mm -hmm. something first, like 
because they don't know who I am. It doesn't matter, you know? So I started tweeting people like Lori Grenier from Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. So she she followed me back on, on Twitter. We started talking. She connected me with Courtney, who still works with her today. We started having different conversations about different ways that we could collaborate together. Mm -hmm. I got, got in front of Marcus Limonis. Wow. I, loved, I loved CNBC The Prophet. It was like my the favorite Prophet. show. Yeah, I watched that show religiously. <laughs> so yeah, like I started watching his show from season one. So mm -hmm. this dates my age a little bit. But Me too. And We're so about the I, same age, by the way. <laughs> You're in good company. Most likely. But yeah, so I got in front of Marcus Limonis. And then I had the opportunity to connect and actually share the stage with him. So I ended up speaking at an event and shared the stage with him and met him in person. Wow. Um, so it was like, all of a sudden, I just like had this like knack, but I'm personable, but I also wanted to ask questions and mm -hmm. learn. And I was driven because I was like, I want to be where they are. Like, mm -hmm. I want to do what they do. I want to help other business owners. You know, I want to, you know, help. And that I got really like, that's where I really was like, I want to be able to invest in other companies too. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I have to also scale our current company at mm -hmm. the same time. So, so I started using social media first. Twitter was, was the vice back then. And then I started going to events, entrepreneurial events. And then we got into events and then I started being asked to speak at events on specific marketing tactics, video marketing, video, things like that. And I started to surround myself with different people. And I know you said some people are, you know, scammy, slimy, stuff like that. But I started genuinely meeting the right people in the mastermind groups that I would join because right. those people started feeling like, you know, colleagues, friends, yes. people that could do in business with that actually trust. Right. Of course, there's still some that came across that I was like, doesn't feel right. Eventually, right. I was like, no, because it doesn't feel right. And so I just started just, it took a lot of time and energy though. So I started doing like partnered webinars, partner joint ventures and different things, speaking to each other's audiences. We would do stage swaps. So mm -hmm. like they come speak at my event. That was the benefit of hosting events. Oh right? yes. I love that. I never even thought about that. And so, 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 and then like we had to generate different things and I always love experiences. And we do that currently with PR experience for people to be booked on our show mm -hmm. and do a, a mastermind dinner and things like that. Like that's something I do on the side. That's fun. That's mm -hmm. connect connective, but we charge for our experiences, but people pay it because they want to actually be connected to these people. that are also in the room. Right. So that's something completely off topic. But what we did is at the events, we would not just charge for sponsorship spots. We would charge sponsorship speakers spots. And then because we had the production background, we created epic trailers, speaker reels, trailers for the people that would come out. So people would hire us, but we also vetted and had them apply to be speakers. And mm -hmm. that's why we would position with some of the bigger ones that like you have to pay to come out. We then charged other people to come out and people might be like, I don't want to do the, the pay to play. Right. But mm -hmm. if you think about it smartly, because we've already built our audience as well, they're also getting traction. They're getting assets from it. Right. But they're also getting behind the scenes stuff. So, so what we do is we'd sell these packages back in the day that we do similar with the current experience, but it was all about the experience, right? So if I'm paying 50K for this speaker over here, I'm going to sell something that's going to pay for this because it's not going to come out of my pocket. So we would fill the room and we'd sell these like five figure to spots, you know, we could sell mm -hmm. like $10,000 spots to be in this room with these influential people, celebrities, people. Mm -hmm. So we'd sell about 25 spots. We'd come in, we'd do a mastermind with the people private from the event itself. So you've got like a 250, 300 person event going on for three days. Behind the scenes in the evenings, we'd have these high level experiences. So you can imagine I was up at like 4 a.m. every day and going to like midnight. But yeah. it was so unique because we made so many cool relationships. So, so after the event was done for the, the attendees, these people that paid for this high level experience would come in and literally we'd go into a room, we'd do a mastermind dinner, then we'd take them privately into somewhere else. So mm -hmm. this one experience that was probably my favorite, we had, we actually sold more than 25 at that point. So it's, it was, it was nice. Cause we had 45 people that we sold. We decided to try 50, mm -hmm. we split them up. We split them up in two groups. We went off into Hummer limousines and we took them over to a private yacht. Oh, it's wow. a tour. We had hors d'oeuvres and drinks on, on the yacht. Not myself. I'm 13 years sober today, but everybody was having the, the drinks and stuff like that. And we took it off and then we rolled up into Coronado Bay into mm -hmm. this large three-story mansion on that. 
We had different sponsors come in, catered dinner, music, different things like that. And then we continued our masterminding sessions to connect people in that room. Wow. So you physically are connecting people. Everyone in the room gets to speak. Everyone gets to know who they are, if they have influence, if they're a speaker, if they're a celebrity. And we said, let's open doors for people tonight. Mm -hmm. Like, let's do this. And so I started hosting these experiences behind the scenes on our other events. So we'd have our main events that mm -hmm. led into our sales to our offers for the agency. And then I enjoyed this piece of connecting the dots. So people started calling me the connector behind the scenes. And then my buddy, my buddy Vince Reed, he was like, you should create a, a course called connect like a baller. I was like, baller is just not my <laughs> not your word. <laughs> But thank you for the insight. I was like, I also don't want to create a course because- I know Vince, by the way, and I can hear him in my head. He's saying that. Like, you should call like, it- You should create a course. That's like a baller. Yeah. Like a baller. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, Vince. I'm like, no, I'm not going to create a course, but I will create these experiences where people remember for years to come. And then I'm just top of mind with what we do on that side. So people just started referring people. So yes. we started not just having affiliates- we yeah, just yeah. started creating power partners. So they just make the introduction. We gave 10, we, we still do today. We give 10% referral to anyone that, that on the overall sale of a package in general. Yeah. And so, and we have high-end packages. So it, it's a decent amount for people. So we have the links and stuff set up, but we're not like, Hey, promote this to your list, promote this to your list. It's more like, Hey, do you like in, introduce here? Do you have an event coming up? Who are the speakers that you're looking for? Cause I'm happy to make introductions. It doesn't have to be me. Allow me to help you get other people. So we started connecting the dots to other people. So some people would invite me to speak at their events or they're like, Hey, I saw that you had your buddy, Sean Cannell, you know, at your event. I think he'd be great to come out and speak or, you know, somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I'd be like, Hey, I'd love to make the introduction for you. It's, it's not coming from a place of ego, but it's coming from a place of like, the more you give like uh, my buddy, Bob Berg, give her book. Mm -hmm. So we had Bob on, on my show and I, I love him. I love the, that essence. The go giver mentality is about placing it into play but actually believing and actually doing what you say, because people would be like, oh, I'm totally a go-giver. But then you yeah. start realizing that there's still an ego there. And there's still mm -hmm. people that are they're like, oh yeah, I'm a go-giver. But then they're like, take, take, take. It's it's really, yeah. Then it's, you're like, yeah, I think you're more of a what's in it for me kind of a person, you know? And you know it right off the bat when you have conversations yeah. with these people. But that was really how it started. It started just opening doors and it was stages wow. after stages after stages. And then it got to COVID came and the stages were podcasting stages, bringing yep. them in webinars, things like that. But because I allowed people to have a memory, I've just been on top of their mind for years mm -hmm. on that side and people have watched different things, but we always just like, well, I'll touch base with people too. I'll be like, Hey, how are you doing? Like, how can I help? Like, what, what do you got going on? Can I help introduce you to somebody? So it just always just like, it's like, I have a calendar yeah. on my calendar to follow up with people over the years they still refer us and they don't some of these people don't even work with us yeah um, on now that. really quickly would you pay out commissions on these referrals or was it most of it just because they were actual friends or relationships well the well commission i would call it the referral fee we get the referral 10 fee on the fee Okay. Yeah. So, so like, not not crazy because some people are like, you know, I've had people say I'll take 50% and I'm like, that's absurd, but I don't know, like maybe there's a you reason never, why you could do, yeah. you could open doors with rev share. So yeah. there's opportunities that open my mind to mm -hmm. also people, one of the sharks actually I'm mm -hmm. talking to right now, we're going to be doing a partnered webinar that I offered 50% of mm -hmm. rev share because obviously it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like I don't mind giving up 50% of any sale that came from this. Like the, it's not going to me, it's going to the team, the company and this other person. Right. So like when you think about that, like the, I think also the, the money thing, that, that number like ratio thing mm -hmm. came to me like earlier in life where I was a little bit egotistical. Maybe mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe I, maybe I was being greedy, but the way I see it is I was like, allow to help this individual that has like millions of followers to open up doors. Mm -hmm. It's not about me at this point. I'm open to talking about rev share. I'm open to talking about referral fees, whatever that looks like. I, I don't give up equity in, in my company, but mm -hmm. there's other things that can give people um, yeah. the satisfaction of what they want. As I well. love it. 
I love it. I've got a new name for that course. It's ethical JVs with long terms for with uh, that build long term success. Not a very sexy name. Love to I was see like, that course. From AI. No. <laughs> I am the AI, actually. Well, thank you so much, Tamara, for coming on the show. You've been amazing. I think you have a, a giveaway too, or something that you give the audience. I think they put that in the notes too. If you want, to, if you're wanting, yeah, to we them. we have a couple of different things that people sure. can have. Share we them have all. Our, share them all. That's the best our, way. Well, can. I would probably just share the the podcast to profit ebook you can find that on our website as well as i believe it's my team can send you the link yeah put it in the show notes <laughs> oh, it's down below <laughs> yeah just yeah so that would probably be the the best one to those that are looking to profit from podcasts it's a nice readable ebook that you can have with all the kind of tidbits that our team does like we don't keep secrets we share all of our methods it's right there a lot of people are like wow that's a lot i need to just outsource at this point because <laughs> you know it's a lot that, that our team does for our clients but that's probably the best free resource download that, that okay. people great. Have. And then if somebody wanted to follow you on social media, I don't know if you're on social media. I am uh, reluctantly yeah. I am. No, what? Well, my my favorite spot's Instagram. So mm -hmm. it's Tamara Thompson official because Tamara Thompson was taken. So I was like, I'm officially. So Tamara Thompson official on Instagram and then broadcast your authority on Instagram is also our podcast and our company page that our team runs over there. So there's stuff a lot of stuff that we have going on there. That's my that's my favorite spot. And of course, you broadcast your authority handle on YouTube. Our show, you can see a lot of people that we've had from Ali Webb, who sold Dry Bar for two hundred fifty five million. We had mm -hmm. Anthony Trucks on there, former NFL Ninja Warrior, motivational speaker Anthony Melchiri from Hotel Impossible. Nice. Jens Molback, the the co founder of Coinstar, was on it last season. This season, we have Matt Higgins coming up, the owner of the Miami Dolphins. We have Morby, real estate guru, a lot of a lot of great experts to, to lead that talk about scaling their companies. So well, awesome. I definitely just followed you on Instagram right now. So you, you got one new Ooh, follower. I'll, I'll follow you back. All right. So for everybody <laughs> who's listening to the show, definitely reach out to Tamara. I hope you can tell that she is an absolute dynamo and just making waves and a real inspiration. So thanks for coming on the show. For everybody who's listening, make sure that you tune in next week. We'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks, guys. Hey, thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, it would mean so much to me if you would subscribe to the podcast and also share it with friends, family, and basically anyone you know who will find the same value in this episode as you do. So to get the latest from me, then let's connect on social media on the Facebooks at facebook.com or Instagram. Then you can also find us on LinkedIn, YouTube, and even TikTok. Yes, I'm back. We are on. Finally, go to our website where you can see all of our other episodes of Operation Agency Freedom, register for live trainings on how to run a highly profitable agency, and you can see exactly how we help marketing agencies fix their operations and scale to eight figures and beyond. Thanks again for listening, and I will see you next time.